Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to review an asset that I put together that actually combines two other amazing, wonderful assets. So if you've seen the channel before, you know that I utilize Playmaker to develop my games. I love it. Visual scripting is amazing. Being able to see your logic right there inside the Unity Editor is fantastic. Um, so there's another tool called the Loot Locker, which if you haven't heard of Loot Locker, um, I'm surprised. But what Loot Locker does is it allows you to, in the cloud, store information about your players, as well as create leaderboards and do a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. So I built this Loot Locker Playmaker integration. Um, so it's a bunch of Playmaker actions that access the Loot Locker API. So you can utilize cool things like um, creating a login system, storing player data in the cloud and also having leaderboards so i put this asset together hopefully i've made it to where it's super easy to use um also my assets available at mrphilipjoel.itch.io and then of course slash loot locker dash playmaker dash integration but if you just go to mrphilipjoel.itch.io you'll find it on the page somewhere and link in the description yeah that'd be smart link in the description all right so inside the project um you'll have already wanted to go to um lootlocker.com um and then create a uh a game or just use their they'll give you a default game last hey do you want us to set up a game for you it's got a lot of examples in it it's worthwhile only thing is if you ever want to delete a game you got to email support and ask them to delete the game um so um once you're here on the dashboard you can go to the documentation and scroll down until you find uh, SDKs in the reference section and then get started with Unity, all right? Because you wanna make sure that you have Loot Locker installed in your project and Playmaker installed in your project before you install my Playmaker integration. All right, so inside the Loot Locker white label Playmaker integration folder from my asset, there is a demo folder. If you open up the demo scene, it'll take you to this blue thing. If you hit play, it's going to kind of walk you through the different pieces you can do with this asset. Um, and the logic is all contained here in this logic game object. So if we look here, I'm going to maximize that. Um, so all the basic connection is happening right up here. So this up here is handling um, signing in, creating users. And then down here, all these global events, these are basically button presses to pull different things. Um, if it's in um, cyan color, it's just activating a new panel. Everything in orange is a different action for loot lockers. So all the loot locker stuff I put in orange to kind of make those things pop. All right, so we're in play mode. Um, if you want quick access to the getting started with Unity that we were just looking at, this button will take you there. Um, otherwise, click next. And so what this will do first is if a user has logged in on the device previously, a token gets saved in player preferences, assuming that you did that, you set that up. So in my logic, um, when I start the white label session, no, when I actually log in, there's a remember me box. So if you want a token to be saved in the computer, um, there's no reason not to, um, check this remember me box. You could always have a remember me box on your login screen. Um, if you wanna give the player the option, um, it's probably the best that you do that, give the player the option. But yeah, I just click and it checks for that token. Um, and what's cool about the token is on the Loot Locker dashboard, um, player, no, settings, platforms, you can see all these different login options. So if you're interested in integrating some of these other login options, reach out to me, um, comment on this, on my uh, integration here. Um, don't comment on the YouTube video because that's hard to interact. Um, find me on Discord, Discord links in the description. Um, and uh, if you're already utilizing one of these other networks and you want to integrate them with Loot Locker, reach out to me because I haven't done the integrations because I'm not using any of these other systems. Um, so I'm not, um, I mean, I do stuff on Android. I wonder what that is. Yeah, you can do, okay, that's something I'll look into later. But these other ones, um, let me know. So on this current project, I only have white label login and guest login enabled. Um, so what white label login is it allows you to have users sign up using an email. If you don't want them to use an email because you don't wanna ask for people their email address, you just ask them for a nickname and then just build a string, add some at yourdomain.com or something after it. And just whenever the players log in, capture the nickname string, but then again, you have to build the string, add your email at the end, and they can log in that way. What guest login does is it just does the token bit. So um, it looks, it 
the user, when they first log in, it's going to save a token on their computer. <laughs> but if they lose, um, if they switch devices, they have no way of recovering. Um, they might be able to reach out to you and you can try to find out um, which one of the players in the player database is them. Um, and then maybe create a new user form and then re-manually add all their stuff. But um, I can't imagine using the guest option. Uh, might be useful for just using the leaderboard system. That might be useful for that. It definitely would be for that. So if you just, because you don't need users to log in if you have like a simple game where you just want to collect high scores. Because what you can do is just do a guest login. Um, they launch your game. They don't even see the login part. But when they get a high score, it asks for their initials or it asks for a name to put on the high scoreboard. And then you can do that. So guest login would be fine. All right. So um, I'm going to stop playing. So what you were seeing there was it was pulling all my players' data. So I'm going to go and clear all my player preferences. So that removed my token. And I'm going to hit play because now I'm going to create a new user. So um, here, if I check for the token now, it doesn't exist. So no white label session was found, which is, means the tokens. So now I can attempt to log in. So I'm going to do steve at steve.com, and I'll enter a password, and I'll log in, and the login failed. So what I did is here's the loot logger white label login. If it fails, I'm just having it display a text that says, hey, if that login didn't work, maybe your email or your password's wrong. All right, so I'm going to sign up Steve instead, and I'm going to go to steve at steve.com, password, password. Sign up. Oh, passwords must match. So what happened, you should always have a password check, is on the sign up. Um, before it actually does the sign up, I'm having it compare those two input fields, make sure those strings are equal. If they're not equal, then it's, it does this logic where it clears them out and puts passwords must match in the place somewhere. So let's make the passwords match. And we sign up. Boom. All right, so now what it's doing in this next one is it's getting the player data. So when we have successfully logged in, so here's where uh, we created our user, we signed up. After the sign up is successful, it automatically goes to this login, attempts the login. If the login is successful, which it should be on sign up, um, it then starts the white label session. So there, you, you need to always start a white label session. So if it finds a token, that's great. But then you still have to transition to starting the session. If you're not signing up and you're just logging in, that's great. But once you're successfully logged in, you need to start the white label session. All right. So once my white label session is started, um, you don't have to capture this player ID, but most of you are going to want to do it. So I just store this player ID as a global variable so I can use it elsewhere because some of Loot Locker's API requires you utilize that player ID. You can't just use the nickname or the email address. So you're going to want to save that as a global variable or something to make it easy to get access to. All right, once we have started our session, we're activating this next panel, which has the player info. And so um, it's deactivating the other panels. And so it sends this event to player info. So the player info event, that's getting their account balance, their XP, and their level, which this is a brand new user, so they don't have any of those things. Um, after it got those things, it then sends the event get name, and so that's over here. It tries to get the player's name, which we don't have set yet, so there's nothing to display. So let's go ahead and put a name here, and let's call this Steve Jobs, because I think I already have a Steve in my demo game, um, and we'll confirm the name change. And so then it goes and gets the player name again and displays it, bada bing, bada boom. Account balance, you have to enable loot locker support or email loot locker support if you want that enabled. Um, it's not on your dashboard by default. Um, all the API is there, but it doesn't actually exist in your game unless you email loot locker support and ask them to add the currency. So I don't have any experience. Um, if we go to look at the loot locker dashboard and we go to systems, the progression system, here is how you have your system set up for progression. So every level is a thousand experience right now by default. Um, there's nothing here. If you create a blank game, this is an example game. Um, so if you have a blank game, you would need to add all these manually. Um, actually, in one of my projects, I am using experience, um, but I'm not actually keep doing any of the logic here on Loot Locker. I do all the logic in game. Um, so if you comment down below, if you can see a, a benefit of using the progression system on Loot Locker, 
Um, I just track experience. I don't actually keep track of levels on Loot Locker. I do that all in game. Um, but there's a way to unlock rewards and whatnot. Um, I don't know if, the, uh, let me know in the comments down below um, if you have any good use cases for that, but I just do all the logic in my game. All right, so if we add uh, 100 experience and we submit our experience, there we go. It's not actually checking for the level. I didn't set up a, it didn't tell it to do that. I should really probably have it do that. Um, so let's see, if we submit XP, let's go ahead, set that and let's send the event. Um, let's get the player info again. What's the player info one? Player info. All right, so we're gonna send the event. It's only sent it to this game, op, this FSM and player info. All right, so I'm just gonna add that to that real quick. I need to remember to re-upload that to itch. All right, next, check for token, there we go. All right, so now if I add like 500 experience, now we have 600, and if we add 400 more experience, boom, we have 1,000 XP and we just leveled up. So yay, team. All right, so the other thing that's really powerful, this is probably one of the most powerful things when it comes to saving what's going on with your players in the cloud, and that's key value pairs. There's so many things that you wanna keep track of on your player, um, like what, what their avatar looks like, um, names of assets they have, uh, maybe even their position in game, that could be a big one. Um, so key value pairs are super important, for example, um, I don't have to have these pre-created on my dashboard. I can create them right from the game. Um, so let's say I want um, position. All right. And so at some place in my logic, I would get player position and I would store it as a vector three. Um, and then I would um, submit it by converting it to a string. And so it's probably gonna be something like, I don't know, 100 comma zero comma 213, something like that. All right, so if I update that value, all right, it was successful, right? It said successful, I wasn't looking. And if I come to my player, there's Steve Jobs. I view Steve Jobs, I go to storage, and we see there's the position right there. Yay. Um, we can store pretty much anything your heart's desire you can put in here. Um, like let's say uh, favorite color. All right, and then we can come in here and say his favorite color is pink. And we'll update that. Success, we can go look at our dashboard now. Can refresh. I'm supposed to be at work in six minutes. I got to wrap this up. And there we go. Favorite colors pink. All right. Um, so uh, let's take a look at leaderboards next. Click on this leaderboard. All right. So I already have two users in leaderboard. I got Steve. I got Philip Joel. They're already on the board. If I come over here and let's say um, Steve Jobs scored five, we click submit. Oh, geez, I thought I fixed my logic. Oh, no, I did fix my logic. Okay. So what this is doing, and it should have cleared this out, is in my logic, because you might have a thousand users in your game. So what you might wanna do is display, you might wanna show the local players um, rank and then everybody around them. So um, what I did is, um, the first thing I do is I get the player's current rank, which I'm storing that, there's a bunch of reset stuff up the top there. Yeah, so I'm getting the loot locker get member rank, and this isn't right because it actually subtracts by one. Um, the rank is three. And then what it does in the next state is it subtracts it by one. And then when it gets the score list, it's getting all the entries after two. So that since this player is at rank three, it's getting all the users after them. Well, what's happened is there are no users after him. And so it doesn't actually um, go any further in the logic. It just stops. And so it doesn't clear out this other entry. Um, so if I actually make him um, first place, so if we I think first place is like 80, let's let's say Steve Jobs scores 90, goes back to the leaderboard. Now he's first place. Oh, and then Steve is also 90. Um, and then the Philip Joel is now in third. Um, one thing that Luke Locker, Luke, Luke Locker? Loot Locker um, needs to update is the person who gets the latest score is getting put on top. And that's just not how leaderboard should work. Whoever achieved the score first, they should be on top and then the next person below them. And I've talked to them about it in Discord and they said, yeah, that makes sense. We've already thought about that. Uh, we'll incorporate it at some point. Not a huge deal, um, but just unfortunately right now, the newest user that gets the score gets on top of the other users, even though they would, somebody else had already achieved that score.
All right. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You don't have to do what I did where, um, we get the scores after, uh, um, after the member rank instead, what we can do is we can just, I can just clear that out and now it'll get the scores from the top. So it'll get all the scores after rank zero, which rank zero doesn't exist. And so now let's put Steve jobs. Um, ooh, real fun. Let's come back because we have to make it to where he can get a lower score. So if I go to systems, and we go to edit this leaderboard. Let's overwrite score on submit, even if it's worse. So now let's say the next time Steve Jobs plays, unfortunately he tanked himself and only scored a five. We click submit and now you can see Steve Jobs down at the bottom. All right, so I hope this helps some of you who've been looking for a way to do a login system or a leaderboard system. Lou Locker's free. Phil, then how come you charge for your asset? Well, because I'm not a huge team that gets funding um, to make this work and then counts on those teams of thousands of users that are in the pay plan. But for most indie devs, they can use Loot Locker for free. My asset, it took me a bit of time to create these actions. I'm going to continue to develop it based on user feedback. So it's five bucks, valued at 10. Once I put them in the asset store, it'll be 10. But go check it out. Um, Loot Locker is pretty dang sweet. It's got a lot of features and uh, they're con constantly updating it and changing it and growing it. So yeah. Um, like, comment, subscribe on this video. Um, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. Check out some of my other tutorials. I got a lot of VR stuff, a lot of Playmaker stuff. Um, yeah, so until next time, see you later.